Hello everyone, it's Ross from Pavia here and I'm going to be running you through the Builder tool, also known as Pavia Studio. This tutorial will cover all the basics you need to know to get started and if you've used the Builder tool before, you can use the timestamps in the description to skip ahead to the advanced controls. So, let's get started. You can download the Builder tool on our Pavia launcher via our website. When you open up the launcher for the first time, you'll need to download Pavia Studio, so click the Install button. If you can't find it, head over to the All Apps button in the top left, click Pavia Studio, and then click Play. So let's create a scene. Right here, what you're seeing is your scene dashboard where you can find all your builds. You can make the Builder full screen over here in the top right-hand corner, and you can exit the Builder at any time via your account settings. To create a scene, you're going to click on this big plus button. It will then ask you to name your scene and choose your plot size. So if you're building a single plot, it'll be one by one. If it's an estate, it'll be three by three. But you can have any combination of this when you're building. So if you're building a PCA for two plots that are next to each other, you'll type in two by one. So I'm going to start by typing one by one here because I'm building for a single plot. Let's go ahead and click create scene and we're good to go. So this is your editor, which contains all the tools that you need. Up here in the top left, you have your home and your save button. Just beneath that is your hierarchy. Just to the right is a button that shows you all your keyboard shortcuts and your scene budget. In the bottom left are your properties. And across the top is your toolbar, with specifically in the top right is your lighting, where you can adjust the time of day and your preview mode. Then you have your account information, and just below that is your asset browser. So let's start with some basic camera controls. If you hold down the right click button on your mouse, you can move that around and that will move the camera. And to navigate around your plot, you hold in the right click button on your mouse and use W, A, S and D to move the camera around your scene. You can also use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And between these three techniques, you should be able to position your camera wherever you want. Now, if at any time you want to test your scene, you can enter preview mode by clicking this button up here with the eye in the toolbar. This will let you run around your scene as an avatar and you can exit back to the builder by pressing ESC to show your mouse and clicking the arrow in the top left hand corner. So before we get started on building our scene, it's really important to know that there are two types of assets. There are props and there are smart objects. And the big difference between them is that smart objects are more customizable and their texture doesn't stretch when you make them bigger. Smart objects are your constructional assets and props are really there to decorate and add character to your scene. So to add an asset, come across to the assets tab on the right and find the asset that you want. You can search for an asset via the search bar through tags and asset packs or just by manually scrolling through them. So I'm going to search for a tree. I'm then going to click and hold on the asset I want to import and then drag it into my scene. So once my asset is in my scene, I can highlight it by clicking on it. And if I press F, it'll focus on it. This is super handy when you have a lot of assets on your plot and when you press F it will zoom in on your asset that's highlighted and center it in the middle of the screen. So from here I can also right click and hold Alt and that will allow me to orbit around this asset in any direction. For those of you who don't have experience in working with 3D, let me tell you, it can be very tricky. And one of the most common mistakes people make is assuming an object is in the right place before checking it from all angles. So when you place an asset onto your plot, make sure you view it from more than one viewpoint to make sure that it is in the right place. And again, use that focus, press the F key and rotate around it just to make sure you've got it absolutely right. So let's go on to moving an asset now. Now, once you have your asset on your plot, you can use the toolbar to edit it how you like. So this icon with the four arrows is the move tool. And in addition to this button, you can also get to the move tool by clicking and highlighting an object and then pressing W. You can use the red, blue and green arrows to move an asset along its corresponding axis. So left to right, forward and backwards and up and down. And you can also click and hold the green square at the bottom here to move it freely across your screen. When you move your asset, you can also hold Alt whilst moving it for more precise movements too. If you want to highlight multiple assets and move them at the same time, you can hold control and click the assets that you want to select and then move them together. Now, whilst your asset is selected and you have the move tool equipped, you can also scale your asset too. 
These yellow arrows will allow you to make your asset bigger or smaller. And down here in the bottom left of your screen, you will see a property called uniform scaling. This is always ticked by default. And basically what it means is when you scale your objects, they will be done proportionally, right? So everything will move together. Now, if you untick this, as you can see, you'll start to stretch your asset depending on which handle you use. Now, if you want to rotate an asset, you can come up here back to the toolbar and click the two arrow icon or highlight your asset and press E. These three lines are similar to the colored arrows you saw on the move tool. So they let you rotate your asset however you want. Each one lets you rotate an asset in a different direction. So simply click and hold and rotate. And if at any time you want to reset your asset, you want to come back to the top of your screen and press the reset transform button or you can simply press S whilst your asset is highlighted and that will do the same thing. Duplicating is also very easy. All you need to do is highlight your asset and press the duplicate button up here. It's the icon that looks like two cards on the top of your toolbar, or you can press Ctrl and D and you will duplicate the asset that is highlighted with the clone appearing right next to the original one. Now, if you want your asset to spawn exactly in the same place, so it's in line with your original asset, you need to hold Control, Shift and D and it will duplicate your asset on top of your other one. Then you just press W or use the move tool to move it and now you have two. Moving on to smart objects. Now, smart objects are a fantastic feature of Pavia Studio Builder Tool. So what are smart objects? Well, they are basically smarter assets that are procedurally generated uh, fully customizable and work in unison with other smart objects. So in short, they do a lot of the hard work for you. For example, when you put two objects together, like a window and a wall, you don't get texture issues when you scale the window. Also, the window will automatically cut a hole in the wall wherever you want to place it. These assets are super budget friendly and make life a whole lot easier. So let's get started. So floors are one of the first things that you're going to want to experiment with. And just like any asset, you can click and drag it onto your scene and then position it however you like. As you can see, the floor has different colored points around it. So these yellow balls move the corners of your floor. And if you hold control whilst you're moving them, they will snap to the grid to make it easier for you to fill the grid and position them how you like. Now, for more customization, you can use the green handles to add another control point. This will give you more freedom to shape your floor. If at any time you want to delete an extra control point, just grab the red ball below the point that you want to delete and drag your mouse upwards on the screen. That will delete it for you. Also, if you come down here to the bottom left in the properties tab, you can manually change the position and thickness of your floor. And you'll see just underneath that is a setting for the surface material. So if you go ahead and click on that and select the material of your floor, you'll be given an array of materials that you can change your floor to. Additionally, you can search the materials in the asset browser and just simply drop and drag it onto your floor like you would a regular asset. Walls work just like floors, so you have these yellow handles here that will let you stretch your wall in any direction, pretty self-explanatory. And this small handle in the corner will let you shape the edges of your wall, making them more or less round. And the long handles with the ball at the bottom of the wall will let you move one end whilst keeping the other one locked in place. Again, just like floors, you can drop and drag materials onto your wall. Now, one thing that I said earlier that makes smart objects great is that you can work them in unison. Now, if you wanted to add something to your wall, such as a shelf, you can drag it in from the asset gallery and it will create a grid for you so you can line up your assets. Now, you can toggle this grid on and off by highlighting the asset you've attached to the wall. So in this case, the shelf and pressing G for grid. If you want to separate the two, hold shift and highlight the asset, then move it away from the wall and now they're separate. The great thing about this wall being a smart object is that when you move the wall, when you have another asset like the shelf attached to it, it'll take any assets connected along with it, saving you from having to move each asset individually. So it all moves together. So doors and windows both work very similarly and they work very much the same as walls too. They are both smart objects and they can be dragged straight onto a scene, straight onto a wall or a floor, and the builder will automatically cut a hole where you want them to be. 
So they have the same four handles that let you adjust the size and both have a handle at the top in the right hand corner that can be moved up and down to adjust the curve of your window or your door too, just like walls. Now the great thing about windows and doors is just how customizable they are. So if you come down here, there are a whole load of different variables that you can play with in the properties tab. You can play with the thickness, the panels, the material, um, you can add curtains, a whole load of stuff. In fact, every window and door you see in the asset library have been created by the same source smart object, just with different properties. So it's the same window, they just look different based on the properties that you give them. So in terms of smart objects, fences are actually probably one of the simplest. So really all you have is a handle to make the fence taller and shorter, two handles on either side so that you can move one side at a time, much like a wall, and the ability to add extra control points just like floors via the green ball in the middle of the fence. Click the green ball to add more points, and to delete a point, you just need to click and hold the red ball beneath the point that you want to erase and then just move your mouse up on the screen to delete it. Fences, just like windows and doors, have a ton of customization via the properties tag. So make sure you check that out and have a play around, including different materials, designs and colors. You know, for example, you can take these wooden panels and turn them to glass. So stairs are the last smart object that we're gonna cover in this video. And just like normal assets, you can find these in the asset browser under smart objects. There are a few basic designs to choose from, but they are super customizable, just like every other smart object. Go ahead and drag your stairs onto your plot like so, and highlight them and you'll notice a few things. The four arrows at the top and the bottom of the stairs allow you to position your stairs much like all the other smart objects. And the rings that you see here above them let you dictate the angle where the entrance and exit to the stairs start. So you can combine these tools to create a straight staircase or have cornered stairs. Now, when you go to add in a floor above your stairs, your floor will automatically cut a hole where the stairs need to go. And there are lots of great features you can edit on the stairs, such as the carpet, the railings, the materials, and much, much more. And there we have it. There's all the basics for the Pavia Studio Builder Tool. If you wanna to watch more videos, check out our Builder Tool channel playlist here on YouTube, and we'll see you next time.